Hello, everyone. Welcome to this DEI update. DEI, of course, stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And I am talking to our town's director of that program, Jillian Harvey, um, who has you know, worked hard, I would say, to carve out the time to talk to us today. Um, we say this about many of our public officials, but Jill, as I was joking with her before we went on, uh, is a candidate for busiest person at town hall, I, I would say. So uh, Jill, first of all, really from the heart, thanks for being here. We appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, we last spoke to you about a month ago, although I'm sure it seems like about a year ago to you. Um, <laughs> and it was just preceding the uh, Martin Luther King long weekend and the commemoration, which was going virtual. We talked quite a bit about that. Um, I just wanted to ask you very briefly, um, you know, what is your recollection, if you have one, uh, of that time and, and of how the event came off from your perspective? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it definitely feels like forever ago, but it was just a month, <laughs> a month and a couple of days. <laughs> um, but I was really pleased with the outcome. I honestly was using MLK Day to, like, I, I think I said that when we talked about it just for myself mm -hmm. to kind of reground and um, really assess, you know, my purpose in the work that I do and just being able to sit alone and watch the program. It felt really great to see it all finally come together. Um, and for the challenges of going virtual, I don't think anyone would have known <laughs> the challenges that we had, mm -hmm. um, but it, I was really pleased with the final outcome. And um, I think, by this time next year, if we can be in person, great. But if not, that we'll be able to do a little bit more since we know the process with everything. Um, and that we'll still be able to bring some of those elements that people love about that program. Well, that is a great attitude to have. Um, uh, but my God, fingers crossed, you're, <laughs> we are not dealing with uh, virtual MLK celebration, you know, 2.0 next year, uh, no matter what you learned, let's go back to live, right? Yeah. Um, let, let, let us hope. Um, but on that same theme, kind of picking up on the threads of a couple of the things that we were talking about when we, saw, when, when we spoke in January, uh, just to find out kind of how those things have been progressing. Uh, one of them was the, uh, the, the teach-in with uh, powerful pathways that you we're, that we're just beginning at that time. And again, just to remind folks, this is 60 folks who are doing a course uh, on, you know, uh, I'll let you explain it, but it's a once every three weeks for, uh, you know, for a few months. Um, and you must be about halfway through with that. You must have had about three sessions, I think, by now. Yeah, we had so, our um, third session this week, actually, on Tuesday. Um, so it's been going well. It's... Um, Again, it's also been challenging. We had kind of, you know, an agenda for each, but we're pretty responsive to what's happening in real life as well. So um, we've been trying to carve out enough time, but it's, it is a short amount of time, two hours, um, to address current issues that are happening that are related to racial justice um, while sticking to some of the core material that we did want to cover. Um, but we're really trying to push folks who are in those sessions to really deepen their introspection. And for us, it's all about self-reflection and then moving into courageous conversations with folks. So taking what you're learning and bringing that out into the community or even just having conversations with family members or friends or neighbors um, to, get, to get things moving to you know, add to the larger idea of normalizing talking about race. But it's going well. We've got two more sessions um, that'll take place in March. So once that pilot program is done, we'll take all that feedback and kind of reassess what what capacity we have to offer it again <laughs> um, and what changes need to be made and just look at how we can improve it. Um, but I do think thus far, the folks who have, um, the feedback has been that it's been, you know, enjoyable and the learning is there. Good. That that sounds good. And, you know, I have to say it, it reminds me of my life, my former life as a teacher, because there's always, there always was, and there always will be uh, quite a gap between how you prepare for something and imagine it's going to happen. And then what happens once, once you 
start to get into it in the conversations that ensue, et cetera. So um, no surprise to hear that things are not going exactly as planned, but hopefully people are going to be taking something real with them and then spreading it beyond um, themselves and their families to, to the community more generally. Um, and lastly on that, I will just say, I do hope that you guys find the energy uh, to go ahead and offer that again sometime soon, uh, though we understand uh, obviously that it does take quite a bit um, of that. Um, one other thing that I wanted to ask you about before we talk about things uh, current or in front of us, um, and that is that you were anticipating the, uh, the, the re taking up the training from National League of Cities, this being training for town officials, um, and that had been postponed for a bit. Um, and as far as I know, did take place at the, at the beginning of February. So uh, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, um, I'm really excited that we're restarting. Um, we, we started this journey last January, um, 2020. <laughs> and with yeah. COVID and everything over the summer, um, it just, we had to pause. Um, the facilitators we're working with have, the demand is high for their work and, Quite honestly, you know, other cities and towns might need it a bit more than us right now. Um, you know, the program that we are um, doing with them came out of the unrest that happened in Ferguson. So we know our place, <laughs> um, but we did restart um, on the 2nd and 3rd of February. We had those two days of training. So we really kind of started with a refresher of what we learned last year because it's pretty much been an entire year. Um, but then we went a little bit deeper and so, um, we're hoping to have the next session sometime next month in March, and that'll be more entering the stages of kind of operationalizing and how to use racial equity tools and how we can apply them to our departments and start to make um, some different assessments and how we can identify the areas that we need to make changes in, whether it's policy, procedure, and overall culture. So I'm really excited that that is back on track. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that you, it sounds like you are on the cusp there of, of starting to put things into action again. And of course, that's, that's the point. Um, and um, so good. Um, let, let, let's hope that uh, in future conversations and updates with you, we get to kind of monitor continuing progress there. Because uh, like you said, um, Arlington is, is a little perhaps a little further along, a few steps ahead of some other communities, mm -hmm. um, but obviously so far ago, so far yes. ago. Um, okay, let's, let's talk about what's on your agenda at the moment, um, and also again, what's coming up. I know that you are, I, I recently spoke to our town's assistant uh, library director, Anna Litton, um, about a program that she and you are collaborating on and she's very excited about. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that you're working with the library and I'll let you describe that. And then I understand there's also a collaboration with uh, the Arlington, the ACAC, um, Cultural Arts Council, um, and, or whatever that is. AC I was just gonna say, all of the ACA sees, so I know this one is Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. There you go. Arlington you messed it up earlier this week. <laughs> yep, yep, I do, obviously I'm good at that too. Um, but anyway, these are important local collaborations. So please just uh, you know give us more of the details. Sure, um, I'm really excited about this project just because I've been, I connected with Anna months back now. I don't even remember when we first started talking about it, but um, that this is going to be a digital archive um, elevating Arlington's voices of color. Um, so it'll be housed with the Robbins Library, but um, the programming that we're doing to build around it, to inspire, encourage um, folks of color in town to contribute something or just create something for themselves, even if they don't want to contribute. Um, but the programming launched last week, this week, no, last week. Um, so it started with a writing workshop with Lynette Benton and I've actually been participating. Um, it's been wonderful and I'm working on my own piece to contribute, um, but it's just been great to know that we're offering this and um, some of the other programs taking place will be 
on the 27th, um, this is in collaboration with the ACAC, <laughs> um, we'll be having Charles Coe do um, an artist talk. He's a poet and he'll be offering um, a workshop on March 6th for people of color as well to continue that conversation into a smaller space and work on some skills. Um, so I'm really excited that we've had this setup of, you know, having artists of color provide, you know, a space for them to showcase their skills, but then also work with community members to hone their own. Um, so ideally I would love to have this, as this archive project, it's not gonna end anytime soon. <laughs> it's kind of ongoing. Um, so my goal would be to have this type of setup every other month, um, have an artist talk, have some workshops, whereas this is just a continuous flow of opportunities for folks. and. The archive is open to any folks of color who live in town or work in town um, or go to school in town. So it's gonna be there. And I believe it's launching um, maybe today, maybe early next week. We're just finishing up um, some of the back end stuff on the web page. But once it's good to go, it'll be live and open for submissions. So I'm really, really excited about that. Yeah, I am struck by the fact that you mentioned that you are personally participating because, <laughs> you know, as we've cited several times um, and is the case, it, it, there's so much on your plate mm -hmm. that it must not be easy to think about adding something else in and, and yet you have. So if you don't mind, if I can ask you, like, what is, you, you know, what kind of uh, inspired you to do that and what do you hope to be um, either taking from it personally or contributing or both? Yeah. Um, so I originally hadn't really thought about participating. And then I was like, why not? You've been waiting for this all to happen. Um, of course, I want to be a part of it. It's what I've been really most excited about. Um, and working with Lynette has been wonderful. I, I The first day I met her, I was like, can you be my auntie? Like, I just, uh, I was like, you, I want to talk to you all the time. Can I ask you just to explain who Lynette is? <laughs> Lynette Bennett is um, a writer of color and an Arlington resident. And she um, has done a number of workshops with the Robbins Library. So familiar to all of the library folks, but it's my first time working with her. Um, so she was delighted about this project when we approached her about um, kicking us off with the first workshop. And I'm sure we'll have her back for more. Um, I just think it would be wonderful for other folks who haven't been able to attend these ones to be able to attend ones in the future. Um, but just the care and um, intentional guidance she gives you during the sessions is just really great. And we have our stories and we share them and we give each other feedback um, and keep working on it, chiseling away until it's almost done. <laughs> right. It's never done, done. So right. we'll still will do. Um, I am, I just wanted to throw one more thing at you around yeah. this topic. And that is um, in speaking with Anna Litton um, about this project, the, one of the things that I found most heartening and most exciting um, is the fact that this is an archive for the, these voices mm -hmm. and they're not, they're not being mitigated as, or, or they're not being kind of um, uh, forced to be in dialogue with the white majority, which mm -hmm. so often happens. And I feel uh, like it's so important for those of us who should be on the, in, in the audience for this to sit with these testaments and testimonies um, and stories and not simply think about how we're gonna respond, but just take them in and take the time uh, to process them again without thinking uh, about the response. Um, yeah. And I think that that's too rare uh, an opportunity uh, for both people of color to be heard and white majorities to listen and yeah. know more. Um, so I'm, as I said, excited about that, wondered what you know, whether you've thought about that particular aspect of this and, and what your own thoughts are. Yeah, for me, it's really, I'm glad we're providing the opportunity for people to be able to be heard without commentary. <laughs> you know, it's not, I'm sharing this and I'm waiting for a reaction. It's, 
this is what I have to say or what I'm presenting or what I feel and want to show. There's no question about it. If you have your opinions, cool. You keep them to yourself, but that's not the space for it. Um, which I agree with what you said. It doesn't happen often. And for me, that's a part of my role that's been most difficult as well. When I say something, sometimes it's, okay, that's what I'm saying. That's not an invitation for your suggestions or your feedback. Nope, it's just what I'm saying. And so that'll be interesting when folks have to accept that, you know, there's not a comments box, there's not a, um, an opportunity to engage there and ask questions. You just need to accept it and sit with it. Um, so I'm really glad that that is going to be there. It's going to be everlasting. Yeah, that's, that's what, well, well spoken. Um, okay. Moving for Well, kind of moving forward <laughs> in a sense, but also just building again on the same idea. Um, we've got the, Community Read, um, Arlington Reads Together, uh, it happens every March, uh, sponsored by the library. It is a usually a, a series of events that are built around uh, the communal reading or the collective reading of a, of a single book. Um, and uh, again, this, the, 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 the Community Read choice this year, something I'm particularly excited about, have had some previous experience with uh, when I was a teacher. and. Uh, uh, just tell us about that. Um, yeah, well, I'll start from the beginning. It was really, um, it was a lot, but I was glad I was asked and enjoyed the process. So I did sit on um, the group over the summer to read through a ton of books and make a selection. <laughs> um, so I'm glad we chose Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria? Um, and I'm really excited that I've been working with Anna on some of the programming as well. And I'll be um, facilitating one of the programs with um, Margaret Friedel Thompson, the MAC co-director. So I'm excited to see all of these happening. And there's so many programs that even if you miss one, there's about 12 more you could <laughs> log into. Um, so there's just the fact that there's programs geared specifically for children, for teens, um, family oriented ones. It's just, I'm really excited that this conversation is continuing. And quite frankly, <laughs> I'm glad all of this programming isn't just happening in February for Black History Month that, you know, these conversations need to happen over and over and over again until they're normalized. And having this as the community read is a great step in that direction to make these conversations be at the forefront. Um, so I'm really excited. It's going to be a busy month, um, but it's all good stuff. <laughs> yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth, too. It's so, you know, something you and I have discussed before. Um, you know, it's very arbitrary to designate a month for us to, you know, look at and, 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 and confront and, and, and process the, the whole idea of Black history and contributions made by the Black community to American history, blah, blah, blah. And then cut that off on March first, you know, it, it, that it, it it's it just feels wrong. So um, great, really great, just yeah. to know that the last five minutes, ten minutes of our conversation have been about things that are coming up yeah. in March or things that are moving forward into March and beyond um, that they have begun in February. Because as you just said. Um, this is not siloed to, uh, you know, to a single month. It is, it is in every sense, something that we have to wake up to uh, and deal with every day um, if, if progress is ever going to be made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you, um, uh, I, 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 I'm aware of at least one other thing I wanna ask you about, but I also want to make sure that we have enough time. We've got, you know, still five or 10 minutes or so. I wanna make sure we, that we do get to um, everything that you want to share. Um, so I know that you um, and we as Arlington and you as the DEI director here in Arlington are a few steps ahead. Um, you know, congratulations, you have just uh, recently passed a year in the job, I think, which again, mm -hmm. <laughs> as we said, a month ago seems like a year. What does a year ago seem like? Who knows? Um, but 
um, really congratulations on that sincerely. And, um, but I do know that, you know, other communities are maybe just starting out um, integrating um, a, a, a DEI um, director or, or officer of some sort into their structure. Um, and that therefore Arlington probably has, uh, there is a need for Arlington to show the path uh, mm -hmm. in some ways to other communities. And um, I know that Adam Chapdelay, our town manager, is very well connected uh, with uh, other uh, mayors, town managers, et cetera, around the state. So I expect that you that that's another call on your time and energy. Yes, it's been quite active on that end. Um, just meeting with a number of different folks from towns and cities who are either stepping into this role or a similar role. Um, town managers or mayors who are considering setting up a role they haven't even gotten there yet um some towns that are setting up boards so i've been talking to a lot of folks um and like i said it's definitely time consuming but it's great to know that everyone is kind of getting on board with moving the equity needle forward um but most recently i met with um abu Toppin, who is the diversity equity inclusion director for Beverly. He just started not too long ago. So again, one of those conversations about <laughs> some advice for some tips. Um, so I know we, now you're a savvy veteran, right? <laughs> I don't feel like that. I feel like I'm learning every day still. <laughs> um, but we, you know, discussed with Adam this idea of getting kind of just a group of people in similar roles together um, to build some, what of a coalition or a collaborative, just so we can not have these singular conversations, but do it as a group, which I think would be more productive. So we're getting that started. Um, we're looking to, we've already got, I think about 15 to 20 folks on our list, I, folks that I've talked to, um, the list keeps growing, <laughs> um, but it's across the state and it's um, really for mun municipal leaders. Um, so it's, we're going to be doing it once a month. We're starting the first Friday of March. Um, so I think that's the fifth, um, but hoping to also pull in MAPC a little bit. So we'll see what happens, but it's just going to be a great opportunity to share some ideas and challenges and just have that support network as well. Um, cause it can be very difficult when you have just this singular role, this single person who is stepping into something who just you want to talk to folks who've been there. <laughs> um, right. And that's exactly what I did when I started last year. I made connections with um, the equity department in Brookline and in Somerville and Medford. So being able to have those folks to look to for me was really helpful. Um, and now I'm tired, but I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to give back to others and share what I've learned thus far. Um, and just to think how we can work together moving forward. Yeah, you know, a, 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 um, a theme or a, a, in a sense, a metaphor that is often used, we've all often heard, um, and makes a lot of sense is how over time, um, especially people stand on the shoulders of others. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like really you're taking your spot um, in that in that line and, um, you know, having leaned on on others to help you get going. Um, you have had a year of intense um, experience. Um, we, all, we, we refer to it. We joke about it or laugh about it. But uh, to be to be serious and to give it its due, it's been. Um, you know, uh, quite an education for you in this role. Um, it would have been a challenge under normal circumstances. Mm -hmm. It's been anything but normal. So uh, exhausted you must be, but also uh, how rich uh, is the trove of experience in just 12 months that you have to draw from and share with others. Um, I'm also glad that you mentioned the support um, element of getting a coalition or a, a group together of folks who are in your position, because um, I do think that that is really important for you um, and, and for the others who are taking on this work. Yeah, definitely. It's been, it'll be just the folks that I've also made the connections with have 
shared, you know, that they don't have any support or are able to talk to other folks who might understand what they're dealing with. And, um, and also just that different layer as well. A lot of the folks who are taking on these roles are people of color working in predominantly white institutions. So that's a big piece as well. It's draining to talk about race all day long <laughs> and then not be able to process it with someone who can understand what you're going through. So I'm glad that that's gonna be available as a space for folks too. Yeah, might want to have a Friday morning session and then a Friday night session. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got it in the middle of the afternoon, early um, afternoon, so you know. Got, got, <laughs> got. Yeah, exactly. So, and it's Friday. It could go either way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, anything, Jill, that we have um, not covered that that should be, and you know, again, with the understanding that we hope to be able to check back in. You, you've already well described how. March is going to be for you. So we're going to mm -hmm. hope that we can get some time with you um, in March because we'd like to, to talk to you each month if we can. Um, but anything that, that we, we haven't, that we've left unmentioned so far? Um, there's a ton of stuff, but, <laughs> but I think everything we touched upon is um, the bigger pieces and just, I'm, like I said, I'm continuously learning and growing my skills. Um, just with facilitating and trainings and reading and just everything. It's been, it's funny when I read at home, I'm not, you know, reading like fun stuff. My go-tos are like history books or books about racism. <laughs> um, so I'm just yeah. constantly in it, but um, other, I think in March, we definitely will connect because I've got some things in the pipeline for April that I'm working on. So things aren't super detailed yet, but um, in a few weeks, I'll be able to give you more info on that. <laughs> great. that Great. We very, very much look forward to it. Um, and we, we wish you, as always, uh, good luck, uh, lots and lots of good night's sleep. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then the energy to get through each, uh, crazy pack day, uh, that's in front of you. Um, you. yeah. Thanks again for taking the time today. Uh, lovely yeah. conversation. Um, I'm James Milan. I've been speaking, uh, with our director of diversity, equity, and inclusion in town or for this DEI update. I thank Jill Harvey for joining us, as I said, and I thank you all, um, out there in the audience for being with us too. Um, we will see you soon.